Hey you, I'm the Queen of Shade. Welcome to the interview. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Oh, and hit my cash app to support your favorite content creator. Now let's get to the interview. Salutations, Dufos. This is your fabulous leader, the Queen of Shade, coming to you with another special presentation. I am moving forward, full speed ahead, talking to interesting people, amazing people, and introducing them to you. So without further ado, I have someone very special that you need to meet, someone who has impacted my life with their beauty and their skills. And I just couldn't wait to talk to them and to tell them as much. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you all to Mr. Tommy Blues. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey, how are you, baby? <laughs> I'm great. I'm so glad we were able to do this. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Sorry, That's my okay. tablet be crazy switching okay. around sometimes. That's okay. So yeah, I'm glad that we were able to do this too. We had a little bit of timing. It was, you know, our timing was this because I think I, I think I had to reschedule on you one day. Yes, yes. Oh, it's been a little crazy, but I'm glad we were able to make it. I appreciate you. I'm glad I get to do this. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you here. You look great. Thank you. I feel good. I'm feeling good. You look amazing. I love the halo over your head. I know. Isn't it beautiful? I love yeah. it. I put it on all my Zoom stuff. So it's like the best. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So would you say that you're an angel? You know, I would say so. Angels did a lot of different things. They weren't always, you know, these heavenly beings, you know, they had, they did a lot of stuff. You know, I think there's even some that had like 20 teats and like did all these crazy things. So, you know, we have angels from here to there. It's a pendulum, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Some people think I'm an angel, but I'm actually a devil. You know, that's okay. And that's still, he was an angel too. I was gonna say, and that's still an angel. So he was a he was he was God's favorite angel, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And music, you know, he was a musician. And yes, he was. You know, we still hear his chords today in the world. <laughs> yes, period. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so tell me, what are you up to today? So today I've just been, you know, being of service to people right now. Um, I've been really taking a new journey, focusing on getting back to my sobriety and living a sober life and kind of what that looks like in my life. And it's been, um, it's been a, it's been a hell of a journey, but I'm so grateful for it. So, you know, that's kind of what I've been in all day. I've been um, running around, helping out people, being of service and, you know, it's, you know, it's I, 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 it's a little crazy, but right now I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful too. My goodness, my allergies. It's allergy season. Oh, Tommy, it's the worst. Look, uh, yeah, but no, I be feeling it. Exactly, exactly. And I take my medicine, and it just doesn't even do anything. Like, and I refuse. I refuse to go crazy with it. So yeah, sobriety is something that is, you know, it's very good for you. You know, um, when I was diagnosed bipolar type one, PTSD, and acute anxiety disorder 15 years ago, I started sobriety, and I started it in many mm. ways. Um, in August the 9th, I will be celibate. Have been celibate for 10 years. I just wow. Yeah, I just started doing a lot of stuff. Oh, but Tommy, I plan to break it. Um, okay, girl. Yeah, I plan to break it. I'm, I'm turning 40 in September. And I'm like, child, that's, yeah, 15 years. Ten, yeah, 10 years there. Actually, not, with nothing? No, honey. I'm breaking Oof. it. So I'm preparing to break it. So You deserve it. Yeah, I've, I've done, listen, I've done some hard work. I'm sitting here with you. So, and I'm just so glad. I just want I want you to know that I count it an honor to talk to you because I am a fan of you. <laughs> I'm, thank you i'm flattered i'm flattered for was, real do you see it? look at this gorgeous man i'm a fan that's actually how i found you i found you tell everybody what you do or how so, I um 
Yeah, so one of one of the many hats I wear is I am in adult entertainment. So Tommy Blues, if you look if you look Tommy Blues up on 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 Google or one of the hubs or or Twitter, you know you'll find my work and what I do there. Yeah. So that's just one of the many hats that I wear. But yes, yes, I guess I I I I have participated in in porn. I don't really use. I yeah, that's that's how I say it. <laughs> And that's okay. That's why I let you say it and not me. So one of the okay. one of your many hats is what brought you to me. And I will never forget the first time I saw you. It was for Young Perps, and you were with Devin. I knew it. And you were you were with Devin Trez. And oh. I I was in love. I was in love. I just, your beauty, your light, your skin, your face, your body. I just was in love. It just, and that was the thing because I, I'm an admirer of beauty, Tommy. I am. I'm a Libra. So hmm. just everything about us, like even on my page in between my work, I show beautiful men. I promote beautiful men, especially on Instagram. So it's just something that I do. Black and Latin men are my thing. It's just what I do. So, you know, I used to be a model years and years and years ago, went to Paris um, for six months, you know, so beauty is just, it's ingrained in me. I know what beauty, beauty is or how to achieve it. So, mm. you know, because beauty, you know, but, but when you see people that have it, there's a great respect for that because it's not prefabricated. It's not um, smoke and mirrors, you know, mm. like a lot of things are. Yeah, you naturally have beauty. And yeah, it was that that brought you to me. And then yes, excuse me, I followed your Twitter and, and you know, started to follow you. And yes, yes. It, but what I love is I've been interviewing a lot of the adult entertainers or the I'll say like you said it, the participants in mm -hmm. entertainment and film from time to time. Mm -hmm. And you guys are just so beautiful. I love um you know, showing the human side of you, the, the, you know, the side of you that people don't get to see, which is not the personal deep side, just the conversation that mm -hmm. allows us to just hear how you think. Even as you were speaking, you know, this is, this is one myth that I love to dispel. Um, yeah, adult entertainers, participants in adult film, they're highly intelligent. Highly okay, that part, that yeah. part. And you can hear it as you speak highly intelligent so tell me um we're coordinating from the west coast you're on the west coast right yes los angeles okay good you're you're in la i'm in philadelphia okay period yeah i'm in philly so are you from los angeles or is that where you just decided to uh, put down roots i just put down roots here i've been here for uh 11 years now but Ooh. originally i'm from colorado Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. You know, I'm a big family. Like I will ask that and then I'll leave you. Yeah, know. yeah. Um, I have three older sisters and a younger brother that I grew up with. Um, I'm also adopted. So then on my biological side, I have um a sister and two brothers from my birth mother and then two brothers from my birth father. So, oh. you know, I got a lot of siblings. But you were able to find them too after being adopted. Yeah, yeah, I found them all, yeah. Yeah, see, look at that. That's so beautiful. <laughs> that, that is so beautiful because, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a child. Oh, so, definitely. Yeah, so the fact that you had all of that support is so, so amazing. Just so amazing. So 11 years in LA, what sparked you to move there? What sparked you to go there? So I'm a dancer. So I um, went to school at AMDA College of Community uh, College and Conservatory of the Arts, mm -hmm. and I got my bachelor's in dance there. And just you know, I just stayed out here ever since then. So I did that in 2010 and graduated in 2013. Okay. Okay. Wow. So you're a trained dancer. What's your um like? What genre do you do? Is it like jazz and tap, ballet, what, what contemporary? Like what is? Mm -hmm. So I do literally everything, but my favorite style is tap followed very closely by modern. So I'm a tapper though. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God, Tommy, you're going to have to, you're going to have to TikTok us some of your tap routines. Absolutely. I've been meaning to put more of that stuff on, on there, you know, I've been trying to get more into TikTok. That's one of the new social medias I'm figuring it out me too i just i just started i just figured it out and like i i got it and it set for like two years and then i yep. just started to to make my way 
through and get into their, you know, algorithm. And it's a whole other thing. I was like, oh my gosh, nothing makes you feel old like that. Yes. Like, I was like, okay, let right. me figure this out. Yeah, I'll be 40 in September. So yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, you don't look it at all. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I was telling my grandmother that I've been through shit with mental illness and hell with my career. And mm -hmm. I just look like I'm like, I ain't been through anything, but it looks good. Okay. Looks Look, good. trust me, no, nobody knows better than I, trust me. Yeah, it looks going to be deceiving, but, I, but I'm but i glad, you know, it's kind of like a beauty for ashes thing, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, so you're out there, you're dancing, you graduate, and you stay. Did you do the, um, the traditional audition to get on this and that and that, you know, mm -hmm. to, to make your way into like uh, performances like for the Grammys and, you know, things mm -hmm. like that? Was that your route? What route did you take after you graduated? Um, for me, commercial dance wasn't the route that I was most drawn to. I definitely went, tried some things out, but I, I, I knew when I was in school, I wanted to do concert dance. You know, I wanted to be on the stage. I wanted to do stuff that you'd see like Alvin Ailey or the Martha Graham Company or Complexions, you know, um, uh, Cleo Parker Robinson, you know, Day and Contemporary. Those are the, those are the companies that I really wanted to be like dancing alongside and with. So um, I did it intensely at Debbie Allen Dance Academy for a summer and then I started dancing for Lula Washington Dance Theater and started teaching there as well. Um, was able to uh, go and start touring with them as an associate dancer and an apprentice and just you know that was really what I focused more on. There would be some commercial things that would come up that I would do every once in a while like I did something for Brooklyn Nine-Nine, did something with this, um, this indie film called Waiting in the Wings but really like concert dance was really what I was more interested in. Ah, I like that. I like that because, you know, you know, you know, Tommy, dancers have the best bodies on the planet. I know, right? We do. <laughs> the hands, the buttocks, the legs, the arms, you know, you all guys. The all the Yeah, yeah, because of all of the movements that you do that, mm -hmm. that is so amazing. Have you ever danced in Nutcracker? I am not a ballet dancer. I do ballet because you have to, to have a foundation, but it is, ooh. It is not my thing at all. It is not my thing at all, but like I can do it. So no, I never did the Nutcracker, um, but props to every person that did, that, that has, is not easy. Right, because I have, I have a lot of guys that I follow that are ballet, you know, and, and, and the reason why I brought that up is because, you know, I'm just so glad that in dance, we are, we really see this now. We oh, see yes. this a lot, we see this a lot. And I mean, you guys are fully trained dancers. This is not a, oh, I just saw and I repeated and I mimic. No, you guys are being trained at conservatories. And, you know, it's just so beautiful. I have a young man right now. Um, his name is Rob. He goes by Rob Living Life on um, Instagram and stuff like that. Rob underscore living underscore life. And I'll never forget when he got it. Like, cause I've been in formation. Queen of Shade has been around a long time. So I've been in formation, but I remember when he first got accepted to Juilliard. Mm, and, now, wow. and now he's in his last semester. That's amazing. And, oh, it's so I love seeing us win. Yes, okay. So now you know why I brought it up. I love to see us win. So, you know, you turn around, you're touring and, you know, you're doing, you know, you're, you're teaching and you're doing different things. Um, what, um, what led you down the path of adult entertainment? You know, people ask me this a lot and mm -hmm. it is, it's, it's really simple because mm -hmm. I'm somebody that like, I can do anything, not just aside from dancing choreography. I've been a grant writer. I've worked yeah. in, um, I've worked in public health and HIV advocacy. Yes. I've worked in mental health yeah. and mental health. Um, yeah. when it came to adult entertainment, I did it because I wanted to like for real, like I wanted to do it, you know, I, I, cause I was, I've been around it for years. I've had friends that were in porn and adult entertainment stripping and, you know, like commercial sex work for years and years and years, but I just never did it. I, I mean, I was always a supporter of it. I'm very sex positive, but it just didn't, it just wasn't something that I felt like doing. And just, um, kind of one day I was just like, you know what, like, I think this is something that I would like to do for years. 
I was doing things that I felt like were going to be honorable or were going to make other people happy or was the right thing to do. And I just ended up miserable working for um, age service organizations that didn't respect me, that just wanted to use me, you know, going like and working at different stuff and just kind of not seeing and getting frustrated with the work that I wanted to do, but couldn't. So I started, you know, writing my own programs and doing my own work. And then when that kind of came up, I was like, well, what do I feel like doing now? And I was like, you know what? I feel like doing porn. And I did. You know, I'm, there's a reason. I've heard, I've heard that, you know, you've been covered before with the question, but I asked because so many times there are such sad sob stories as to mm-hmm. how and why. And I asked you because I knew yours would not be sad and sob. It was, yeah. I, you know, you said it, I'm sex positive. I did it because I wanted to, you know, and you have, you have admirers around the world. You know that. It's it's a little surreal when that happens because to me, like, I don't know, like I when I when I do it, it's it was really just because it's something that I enjoyed. I was like, okay, this might make some people happy. Like that's great too. But you know, it was just like I felt like doing it. So when when people tell me that they like see it and they they enjoyed it and they liked it, like I'm really flattered. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like really? Like, okay, thank you. (laughs) We've all enjoyed it. But tell us, like, (laughs) so like. What does Tommy Blues do for fun? Like, what do you do that, that kind of like, because I, I, well, first let me ask you, what's your zodiac sign? I'm an Aries. Yeah, that's why. I'm a Libra, that's why. Uh uh-huh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, my birthday was just on the 12th, so I just turned happy 30. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Yeah, Thank we, you. we talked about that, yeah. Happy birthday, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll be 40. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what I do for fun? I mean, I, I, I love getting to museums. Like I love the Getty. It's one of my favorite places in LA. I love going and looking at art, like, you know, abstract, whatever it is, Renaissance stuff. Um, I love going to the beach. I love going to Dave and Buster's and playing in arcades, bowling, you know, like I'm, I, I, you know, I just like being active. I like going and doing fun stuff, you know, and I, I absolutely love cinema and film and movies. So, you know, like I, uh, you know, I always love watching something new like that. But, you know, I'm, I, I, I kind of go back and forth from being a homebody to being somebody that's like, all right, let's go out and like do something. You like, you know, it kind of, it kind of varies. <laughs> well, I like that. I like that because, you know, we don't usually get our stars like and that's the thing like we don't usually get our stars you're one of our stars especially in our community you're one of our stars and and I push that narrative all the time because I want people to understand that you know the LGBT community we have our stars you're considered one of our stars and that that is within our community doing what we're doing and yeah you're dancing you're crossing over and you're doing amazing things and working to you know help others and things like that but you're you're ours we claim you we love Mm. you you're ours. We support you, you know? So uh-huh. you know, it's just nice to, to hear that, you know, you're having fun. You're enjoying yourself. How's the weather over there today? It's pretty sunny. It's not, it's not um, unbearable, at least today, but it's been pretty, pretty, it's been warming up. <laughs> okay. And is it, is it up Northern? Like, is it more Northern from LA where the fires usually happen in the summer? Um, usually, usually up North. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because um, like Central California, like not quite, not not usually too far down south, but yeah. Okay, see, people don't realize California is a large, large, large state. There are hours between northern and south. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, and you you drive over there, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I drive. Yeah. My God, how do you deal with the traffic? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I really, yeah, I'm not sure. I really, I, yeah, I don't even have an answer for that. I don't know how. <laughs> divine intervention, divine intervention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will say that. Yeah, I would say that. So, my God, do you get home to Colorado much? Um, lately, I haven't been home much, you know, especially because of like the pandemic and everything. Um, I, you know, the only time I got to see my family was actually for my uncle's funeral. Um, so it was in Oklahoma. So I actually haven't been back to Colorado since the, um, the Christmas before COVID. Yeah. That was the last time. That was the last time I went. So it's been a little over two years now. Yeah. No, the reason why I ask is not really for, you know, family, personal information. I just, I'm curious as to how it was like, or what it was like for Tommy Blues to grow up 
in school, loving dance. And, you know, I want to know, not necessarily if you were bullied, but how did that look for you? Was that an easy mm. thing? Did you <clears throat> specialize school that, you know, was more uh, performing arts and creative, like mm -hmm. that, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, the town I grew up in, it's called Estes Park. It's actually where The Shining takes place. Fun oh, fact. Oh, okay, okay. So it's very small. We had maybe, maybe on a on a good year, we had 500 kids in my high school, you know, total. Okay. You know, so it was small. We had about, we had, um, my graduating class had 98 kids. So um, it was small. I was one of the only Black students. Um, there were maybe, maybe four or five of us in the entire school. I was the only one in my grade. So, you know, um, only out gay kids you know for years and years until I was a senior then a few other people came out um one of the only boys that like the only boy that was on dance team you know one of the only boys that like that like did the performing you know there were more of us that sang but like I just kind of always stuck out I never you know I was always people would always say that I was like a big fish in a small pond was really what like everybody always told me growing up you know so um you know, I, I definitely got bullied, but it wasn't it like I never got beat up. It was never it was never it was more like verbal stuff and kind of like mental and emotional things, which, you know, was definitely a little damaging, but it wasn't it really wasn't that bad. Like, I'm really fortunate that like a lot of the kids that I that I was in school with were even though we were in a very conservative town, a lot of us were pretty progressive still in kind of how we thought, you know, we kind of always knew that like adults kind of fucked the world up and they were telling us lies or shit like we all kind of knew that so you know like people weren't super super judgmental it was more just like they it was it was it was more of people that like were kind of in that place where they were okay with gay people but at the same time they felt like it was a choice but now like since growing up a lot of them don't feel that way anymore you know yeah. so you know for the most part I I had a lot of support from people around me even like the guys in my school that were definitely extremely homophobic like would still cheer for me when I'd be on the dance team and like I'd be dancing and killing it like it was it was some really weird kind of confusing stuff like growing up but now I look back on it and I'm like you know like as as, as conservative and as backwards as I like to think that town is, I really didn't have it that bad. You know, um, I was very privileged to have the family that I had. I mean, my, my family is white. Um, so, you know, um, growing up with that definitely set me apart, like culturally when I started to like, you know, get around other people that looked like me. And I really started to see like the advantages that I did get. And even though there are some handicaps when it comes to like black culture and like blackness or whatever that means, you know, um, I'll say I, I had a lot of advantages, like anything that I wanted to do, any sport I wanted to pursue, any play thing I wanted to do, I was able, you know, I was able to do it, you know, I got to travel you know we've traveled all around the country you know I got to go to different I got to go to different countries you know when I was in high school with exchange things you know there are just so many things and doors that were open for me because of my education because of my family and and the community around me so it's like it, it, it's kind of I don't even want to say it's a double-edged sword it was like there were there just were benefits and then there were disadvantages you know but overall like my privileges and benefits really outweighed the disadvantages I'm so like Tommy I was so excited about doing this because like I knew I was talking like I'm an intellectual entertainer now yes I do music and I do all of these other things but my mind is what you know got me here and mm -hmm. it is um that's the thing that they you know they want to say is flawed oh you you're bipolar type one your ptsd your acute mm -hmm. anxiety disorder these are these things but these things have become superpowers to me they yes they, yeah they make me quite an empath and and my stamina is just so you know I can go and go and go and work and work and work and then still remember self-care so that's why I just asked because it's just you know it's it's nice to hear that you know people there are still good people in the world because you know with, with you saying that you were a young gay kid I mean you knew who you were from an early mm -hmm. age and you were allowed to be that like as like we were when you were mentioning the black experience I was not allowed to be that you know mm -hmm. the answer to the question was more church more prayer more fasting more, you know, you know, like more going to revival, more, you know, seek God, more, more Bible. And then, you know, I, I get older and I reject everything. 
because it just was not. And then I find the divine on my own. And, mm-hmm. and the craziest thing was I tell people this all the time because I'm so proud of it. I was in Paris and the divine outed me to myself. The divine mm. spoke to me and told me, you know, you're gay, right? And I cried and screamed and hooped and hollered like somebody was murdering me because for me, I had a different experience, you know, but I love how you said that because I was being bullied in the city, you know, inner city when I was younger. I want to say before like 10, I was like 10 years old, nine and 10. Then um, because of my grandmother being an educator, we were able to be able to afford to move out to the suburbs where the physical abuse stopped, but there was still a lot of verbal abuse. Mm-hmm by, you know, my, my classmates and different things like that. It wasn't an easy thing. And what they did not understand was I was going through hell in my house, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was just a different experience. And I, I, I'm just so glad that, you know, you were allowed to be yourself. I mean, but, but this is the thing. And I want people to see this. You're Tommy Blues. I'm the queen of shade. Eventually we get out on our own and we level out. We, we are mm-hmm. we need to be, you know, so we don't need to, you know, drag and drudge through the mud. I mean, because the point is get out, you know, stand on your own and, you know, be who you need to be. The only difference that I must illustrate is for the Black experience, unfortunately, when you decide that you want to be who you want to be, you're usually cut off financially. So then you're in, mm-hmm. the street, you're in the street, you're homeless. I was homeless. You know, I had to depend on the kindness of strangers, but I survived. So I just, you know, I just wanted to hear, you know, just the differences, you know, that yeah. had because, you know, I feel like people, like I learned how to be confident, you know, with my work and with what I do and how I live and my therapy and all of that. I learned how to be confident, but I love when I hear a person is given the space and the opportunity to be themselves from an early age, because it keeps you connected to yourself. You don't lose yourself, you know, you don't lose yourself. So segueing off of that real quick, what did you do for your 30th birthday? I went to Dave and Buster's. I spent my 30th birthday sober. Um, I went to Dave and Buster's with some friends. We had some dinner. The food isn't great because you don't go there for the food. And we just played video games. We just played arcade games, you know, just had a blast. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you have a big friend group over there? Um, I do. I have a lot of people that love and support me. Um, it was kind of last minute plans, like literally like the day before I was like, I want to do this. So it was like, maybe it was like four of us, you know, that were there, but I I still had a blast, but you know, like, oh, that's something that I've been thinking about more, like, like, especially, you know, working my steps, this go around is really been looking at the people that I have around me that love me and support me. And like, you know, I realize I have a lot of people that are really rooting for me to win and that love me and that are my friends. And it's just like, it's, just, it's been great to, cause I just moved back to LA on March 1st. So it's great to be back and kind of like, you know, really seeing now all the, the people that I got around me. Yeah, no, it's good because I love what you said. I mean, I'm, this is why I brought you on here is because I, I literally, the whole point of this you know, conversation was to let you know that you are adored beyond measure. You are loved beyond measure around the world. I love you, you know, and so many people love you and you, know, you matter to us so much. And that was the point of this, you know, to talk to you, but to, to pour into you and let you know you're really loved, you're really adored. You've given so much of yourself in life, in your work, in everything that you do. And I want you to know that, you know, it's gone out here into the universe and now the universe is giving it back to you because you just are a very powerful young man. You truly are. You're a very powerful young man. Um, have you ever thought about acting? Yes, I love acting. That's actually, you know, what I did a lot of um, the, the performing arts school I went to. Like, I was actually a musical theater major at first, and then when I switched to dance, um, you know, later in the sem- later in, at that school, dancers take like acting classes later. But because I was a musical theater um, a major first, I already had taken those, so I got to take um, more advanced acting classes that the other dancers didn't get to take. So I love acting. I love being on the stage. I love playing like all of that yeah um I think you should pursue that didn't you think it was weird that I asked you that 
<laughs> a little bit, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm a, t- tell me I'm a shaman. I'm a shaman. I'm a shaman. Yeah. I'm a oracle, a prophet, a seer. Yeah. A Period. Human. Okay. And I got a lot of gifts. It's the duality. I have two spirits, male and female. So yeah, yeah that duality gives me a lot of balance. And That's I make beautiful. Like, hear from the divine. Yeah, I hear from the divine a lot. And then my ancestors will speak. And sometimes I, you know, they help me with my music. I write my music and it, it comes out and it's because they're singing it to me. So. Oh, they be playing jokes on me sometimes. <laughs> they're like, they're like, we're gonna teach you a lesson and we're gonna laugh about it. I'm like, all right. All right. Right, thank you. <laughs> no, no, but you should definitely be acting. Like, yeah, I would love to, I would love to be able to catch you Broadway or something. I would love to be able to catch you, you know, acting. That's something that you should do, um, something that you should pursue because I just, you have so much light. And that's what people don't realize, you know, about a lot of people in this world, you know, they can they consider if you if you're not, you know, a cookie cutter cutout of what this is or what this is, then you're not, you know, they try to, to devalue you and it's, it, or us. And it's just not, it's not that way. You have a lot to give. Um, like, like, even as I'm talking to you now, you have so much energy. And the thing is you're able to focus it. You're able to focus it. Do you like animals? I love animals. Yes, yes. I'm definitely a dog person, but you know, I like all animals. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, spirit animals. What's your favorite animal? You said you're a dog person. What kind of dog you like? What's your favorite? Dog? Oh, I love basset hounds. Basset oh. hounds. They're my favorite. And boxer, boxer terriers. Okay, okay. Yeah, bassets, they're so long. I got the, I got the chance to um opportunity when I was younger to baby the floppy my, ears. Yeah, the floppy ears and the long bodies and the tail. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just so cute, so cute, so cute. Oh my god. So in the next, so you said you just moved back to LA. What's on par? I mean, what's on par? Like, what do you have any um, plans for like any entertainment that you like it, plan to do in the next? It could be adult, it could be mainstream, it could be commercial. Like, do you have any, like, what's, what's next for you? Yeah, so I mean, I'm definitely been letting people know like down that I'm back in LA right now. I've just been focusing on like establishing a good sober foundation before I start like auditioning and, you know, getting back more, whether that's commercial or adult or whatever it is. So yeah. I've just been making sure my my foundation's solid before I do anything. But, you know, it starts off by like, I have to get a whole new set of headshots because all my stuff has my Afro and like yeah. cornrows. So it's like, in, in some ways, I'm kind of back at the at, back at the beginning with that, which is a little exciting. You know, I get to kind of figure out like, OK, like, what are my types now? Like, because my look, even though I don't feel like it changed that much, people are like, you look so different. And I'm like, OK, so I have to go back and see now what that what, where that puts me. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm going to be um, working with my uh, the college that I graduated from. They have a high school conservatory program. So um, hopefully I'll be helping them with that this summer kids that get to come and check out the school see if it's the right fit for them um I did that the summer before COVID hit and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had so hopefully I get to do that again this summer and you know that's kind of what I'm focused on um I'm um finishing an application to go to grad school hopefully that'll all go well you know so that's kind of what my my focuses are right now and you know hopefully we'll get back to auditioning and doing that soon but you know just kind of keeping my my eyes focused right now i like i loved your afro but i love this too i love that's what everybody tells me right i miss I it i miss it but i, I i've come to it love this too. yeah it looks good because it, it just it shows that beautiful face a lot more you know oh uh, yeah so grad school um what what are you planning to go for so there's a great, the, the college I graduated from, they have a great program. Um, of course, you know, I'd love to get my master's in dance, but they also have a great master's program for screenplay writing and, and screenwriting. Uh, and just, you know, I just, I feel like I have, I, I'm such a storyteller. It's really something I've been, I've been, I've been contemplating. And because I got my degree from there, even though, you know, they, they don't, they don't have a minor for writing there. It's like, you know, dancing, singing, or musical theater. Anyway, yeah. sorry dancing musical theater or acting so anybody that gone through those can apply for the grad school thing and I did a lot of the writing classes there so I'm just like I've been entertaining it and I just feel like you know that's something that I want to I want to put my feelers out there and see you know and just 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 see send in the application and just see what happens you know like why not 
I see a lot going on for you. And I mean, in a good, I mean, <laughs> great, but I mean, in a good way. You know, we're hoping so. Yeah, as in a good way, you know, like, no, people, people have no idea how gifted you are. They have no Thank idea. You. You're extremely, extremely gifted and loved by the universe and the divine. It's just so powerful, so powerful. And like you said, you know, earlier, because even when we had to change it around, I'm not going to say what you were doing because that's personal, but you were giving back, you know, mm. and, and it's just like when you give back, the universe can't help but to turn around and pour back into you because you're pouring into it. And I just, I, first of all, I know you have a meeting. I know you have a meeting coming up. So I just, yeah. I just want to thank you for the time that you gave me today, just to be able to talk to you because you're there, you're present, you're in the moment. And I, I like that. And, you know, there's so many things that you're good at. And I, I, and that was the thing like when I was younger, because of the trauma, I was stunted, like my growth was stunted and I was a late bloomer. Um, I didn't really blossom until six years ago. I was like, what, 36, 37, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. So um, it just, it's nice to see you blossoming and being able to do all that you do. I mean, I, I eventually came to it, like I eventually yeah. But, um, you know, it's, it's nice to see that you, you know, you're doing it. And I definitely believe that you'll be, you'll be great with your sobriety. I don't think there'll be any problems. I don't, I don't see any turbulence. I like, Thank I, you. Usually, yeah, I can usually see those things. I don't see, I don't see anything that's going to trigger you. That's going to be traumatic. That's going to be, no, I see you'll be fine and you'll continue and you will do an amazing job as an, I actor. accept that. Thank <laughs> you're you. accepting that. Good. Cause I'm, I'm pouring yeah. out love to you. So I thank you so much. I know because I'm I'm looking. You have a you have a you meeting. good? Yeah, you have a meeting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have a meeting. But tell everybody, give everybody three words that inspire and empower you. Hmm. Three words. Gratitude, strangely. Gratitude. <laughs> um gratitude genuity yeah. and charisma yeah, yeah. that's what gives me yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all very good words now tell everyone mr blues where they can find you on social media all right so all right i'm gonna give y'all the th you're, you're gonna get the three personalities so if you want to <laughs> follow more what i do um that's a little more you know i guess more of like my advocacy and stuff you can find me on facebook my legal name is thomas davis which i don't mind sharing it's no secret so you can find me on facebook there um if you like instagram that's more of my dance i do a lot of my tarot readings and stuff on there you see a lot of my photography you know that is tommy's a dancer t-o-m-m-y I S A D A N C E R. And then if you um, are interested in seeing my adult film work, just look up Tommy Blues on Twitter and any other hub that adult porn exists, and you will find me. It's Tommy Blues with two Z's instead of an S. And yeah, that's that's all my hats for the most part. <laughs> I love all of your hats. And I, I like I do, my hat is off to you. I absolutely adore you. I adore you. And I'm not the only one. So thank I you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Of course, I'm honored. This was great. No, yeah, this was great. And we'll have to do it again. Yeah. You were running around. You got a meeting today. So I know. How right. I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I know how meetings are, though. You know, you got you got to have them. We need to have them because they keep us going, you know, strong and focused. So yes. ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the vocal stylings of Mr. Tommy Blues. Now you can say goodbye, but don't go anywhere. All righty, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This was great. You're welcome. So did you enjoy? I hope you did. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and don't forget to cash at me at the Queen of Shade. I am your favorite content creator, right? Right. You want to see more of this content, right? Right. Cash at me. I love you. Mwah. I got my black stilettos on. Don't you make me take them off. I'm a pounding person. Wish you wanna show you I'm a boss. I've been given 60 seconds just to put my thing down. I'll have you wanting my stilettos by the time I turn around. Turn that TV down.
Come on. 